Hi there folks, it's Matthew Seville with SLOLounge.com and here I've got this really cool star trail photo that I made in Joshua Tree recently and I'm going to show you how to accomplish this type of photo with pretty much any camera or any lens that you might have and also using pretty much any version of Lightroom or Photoshop. It's a very simple process and the main key ingredient is simply knowing what the heck you're doing. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to hit escape here and go back to Lightroom. First things first, you can see that this image was made at ISO 3200, 120 seconds at f2.8, and 14 millimeters. This is on the Nikon D700 using the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8. And now that's a pretty pricey lens. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, how do I accomplish a shot like this without a $2,000 lens? And the answer to that is quite simple. All you need to do is understand your lens's aperture and figure out what exposure is required to get a properly exposed shot in the darkness of the desert or wherever you are. And if you don't believe me that this is possible, uh, let me, hold on, it's in the other window here. Let me show you. This is what it looks like when you use a $175 lens that I got on eBay and it's an f3.5 lens and I believe I took this photo at like f5.6 or something. So like I said, pretty much any lens can accomplish this type of shot. Now let's get out of here and close this and go back to Lightroom here. The first thing that I want to talk about is your shutter speed. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to shoot photos that look like this. And hopefully, probably the first thing that comes to mind is, well, why don't I just take an hour long exposure and get all those super long, cool star trails in one single photo? Well, the answer to that question is quite simple. Uh, basically, most digital cameras can't handle that. Especially in warmer conditions, you are simply going to get way too much noise on a DSLR sensor if you try and shoot for longer than two or four or so minutes, depending on how cold it is. You can get a little bit better results if it's freezing cold, but in most conditions, you simply don't want to take longer exposures than one or two minutes. So what we're doing is we're taking two minute exposures and then combining all of them later in Photoshop. Anyways, this is what the 120 second exposure gives you if you take a single exposure of the night sky that is 120 seconds long. Now 120 seconds is a two minute exposure. So the next thing you gotta keep in mind is that you'll need some sort of timer device, uh, an intervalometer or a shutter cable release type thing Preferably, I like to have intervalometers because they allow you to take consecutive photos of whatever length shutter speed you want. Now, you can still accomplish this photo without any sort of accessories, but you're, only, you're simply limited to 30-second uh, exposures on most cameras, which, if you're in the very, very darkest part of the desert, is going to be too dark at ISO 3200 and F whatever, you know, F2.8 or F4 or something on whatever lens you have. Now, if you have an F1.4 lens, you might be able to pull it off with just 30 second exposures. But essentially, the trick to accomplishing this with any camera and any lens is that small, you know, it's a $30 accessory or a $40 accessory that allows you to shoot consecutive images at, that are 60 seconds long or 120 seconds long. Okay, once you've got your exposure set and your histogram looks something like this, you know, you can afford to underexpose it by about a stop or so with pretty much any camera these days. So don't worry too much about, you know, getting your exposure just perfect. What you want to focus on is being able to take consecutive photos, right, one right after the other. That is the critical element here. As you can see down here in my film strip, I have consecutive photos. Oh, I should have made them load, huh, before I recorded this tutorial. You can see this one is taken right after that one. And look up here in the corner, you can see the stars moving through the sky in the, the rotation just like that. So if I go to the next image here, oh, a car drove through and shined their headlights on the Joshua tree here. Dang it, I'm going to have to Photoshop that out or something. You can see how the stars are slowly moving through the sky from shot to shot. Your goal with all of this is going to be to achieve about an hour's worth of total photos. 
So if your shutter speed is 30 seconds and you're taking shots back to back, then that would be what, uh, 120 photos. Or if you have a one minute long exposure or a two minute long exposure like I have here, you would wanna take 60 or 30 photos total. And that's about what I have here if you look down and you kinda scroll back and forth. I've got eh, 20 or 30 photos, so that should be good enough. Now let's go into Photoshop and look at the photo that I created. I started working on this photo already and you can see what I've got is all of these images are layered one by one. So if I hide each layer, you can see how the star trails get shorter and shorter. So that's essentially what I'm doing is I am just combining all of these photos one by one so that the star trails extend. And if you zoom in, you can see that it looks as if they're one long continuous exposure. And that is why the critical thing is to get your original photos to click back to back to back. And actually, if you're using a 30 second shutter speed because you have a fast enough lens or the nighttime sky is bright enough, you know, maybe the moon is shining or something, if you're at a 30 second shutter speed, what I'll do sometimes is I'll just put a rubber band around my camera and just put like a little ball of tape or something underneath the rubber band between the rubber band and the shutter and just let the camera click away. And that's honestly the best way to get back to back shots that are perfectly seamless. If on the other hand, you're using an intervalometer, you're going to have to be very careful with the particular device because sometimes the intervals aren't exactly the same. Say I'm doing a one minute exposure, I might pick 61 second intervals or one minute, one second intervals so that the camera tries to click photos back to back. Or if the intervalometer uses intervals that are between exposures, I'm not sure, you know, maybe there's some brands of intervalometers out there, then you would try and set it at a zero second interval or a one second interval. So again, that's just something you're gonna have to play around with and try and figure out. For me, for this particular intervalometer that I was using, it's an Aperture Pro Coworker 2 remote. I simply set it to take two minute exposures and I set the interval to be two minutes and one second or two minutes and two seconds or something like that. I forget exactly what. And it wound up giving me this pretty seamless look overall. Finally, let's move on to the key ingredient in all of this, and that is how do you combine all of these photos so that the images add together instead of just layering them on top of each other one at a time? Well, that is a little trick called the layer blending mode. And that's right here in the layers panel. If you see, I've got all these layers here. Up at the top, each one of these layers you'll notice, except the very bottom layer, each one of these layers you'll notice has a different blending mode than the normal one selected. It's called lighter color. Now there's a couple of different blending modes that can accomplish the same look, but I prefer this one, lighter color. And if you look in here, you can see I've got all these different blending modes. Lighter color is my favorite. So let's see what, it, let's see what happens. I've got this next image here and oh, there's a, another car headlights shining on the rock here. I'm gonna have to figure that out. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit Control A or Command A on a Mac to select everything. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy it. I'm gonna hit Control W to close it. I'm gonna say, no, I don't wanna save. And then I'm going to paste it on top of this whole big PSD file that I have here. Now, see how it just, it looks normal, just like it used to. And then when I change the layer to lighter color, the layer blending mode, here we go, watch this. Now it's going to compound that image on top of all the others and see how it added, it did add all of this uh, brightness to it. So if I hide that again, you can see, see how the rotation of the earth makes the stars a little bit longer, the star trail, and how it also added that car headlight to this rock over here. Now to remove that, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a layer mask here and I'm going to brush it off just like this using my brush tool right here. You can hit B for brush. And I'm just gonna go over it a little bit. I'm gonna kinda of do it a little bit sloppy here. Let's see. Yeah, let's be accurate. There we go. So now we've got the stars rotating in the sky. I shouldn't say that. I should say the earth rotating. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's try the next one. Thankfully, I created an action to do all of that for me. Everything from cutting, pasting, and creating a layer mask. So here I've got this action. I'm just gonna hit play on that, and it's gonna do all of that for me. Now this layer didn't have anything messed up with the foreground, so I'm just gonna click on the next photo. I'm gonna play this action again. Yeah, there's a little bit of light from something, but that looks okay. I'm just gonna go down the line really quickly and just keep on pasting these and hitting play. I have a hotkey on the side of my mouse set to play actions. That's why I'm playing the action without even going down here to hit play, in case you're wondering. Let's uh, play this next one, layer this one on here, layer this last one on here, here we go, almost done. 
And there you go, folks. Let's hit save and let's close this and go back to Lightroom and see how it looks. Here's the final image. Oh, hey, I've got one little meteor over here in the corner. That's nice. And in retrospect, I probably should have composed my shot to include the North Star, but I really wanted to have this tree kind of separated from the rocks here. So I guess that's just the composition I wound up with. Anyways, I hope you learned something new today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in and take care.